Hi everyone, so it is that time again to talk about the oil tankers. This has become one of my favorite segments because it gives me a chance to refresh myself on what has been happening to, and listening to the CEO speak about their companies. Now I'm going to discuss Euronav, DHT, TK Tankers and Diamond S Shipping today. Now I know there are other oil tanker companies out there, but I think most of today's video will apply across the whole industry. So stay tuned and let's talk about all things oil tankers. Now, if you're new to my channel, well, welcome. My videos are about investments that anyone in the world can make. I'm trying to help as many people as possible understand what they are actually investing in. Most people will spend more time researching their next computer than they do their next investment. Now, I have built a reasonable size investment portfolio myself that I'm aiming to continue to grow at about 20% per year. Now, I base a lot of my knowledge on the great investors, Peter Lynch, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Monish Pabrai, and a handful of others. Now, I'm not perfect at this. Not every investment that I make is going to be a home run, but we definitely will find some great investments and push for that 20% goal. Now, if you are one of these new people, I have a two-part oil tanker series where I explain the investing thesis in detail. So please take a look at that for a better understanding on why the oil tankers, in my opinion, are a good investment. Okay, let's start with the short-term stuff. Now, the tanker spot rates in Q3 were really low after a crazy first two quarters of the year. Q3 is seasonally the weakest period and also the world hasn't got back to normal oil consumption yet, of course. These lower rates are not good for the tanker companies, but we did expect this. Here is me explaining this in the last update for the oil tankers back in Q2. So the cycle for the strong tanker shipping rates is expected to start sometime in 2021 or 2022, whenever the demand comes back to normal. But until demand gets back to these levels, well, it is expected that the rates are going to be significantly lower. So winter in the Northern Hemisphere is pretty much it. This starts a generally high consumption period of oil as heating is required for a lot of the world's population. Now, early indications are seeing rates starting to pick up but these high rates are going to be booked in Q4. Now also vaccine news has started to be announced, which is giving companies at least some visibility into the future. Look, I don't know how long this is gonna take, so I'm not even gonna guess, but the companies can start planning. So the expectation is that in 12 months time, oil demand should be nearly back to normal. This is when the oil tanker companies will be booking very strong rates. Now let's talk about the medium term timeframe. I think this slide from TNK Q3 presentation sums up the medium term nicely. See, the fleet won't grow much over the next few years because as you can see by this graph, the order book, which is the order's place to buy new tankers, is at multi-decade lows. It takes 18 months at least to build a new ship, so that means the numbers on the order aren't going to increase anytime soon. Also, the age of all the tankers is getting old. Tankers go off to tanker heaven in Pakistan or Bangladesh after about 20 years. There are about 20 tankers a year reaching 17 and a half years old. Low rates generally will encourage companies to send them to tanker heaven because at this time they become really expensive to keep getting regulated. Old tankers are also getting lower rates. So if rates are already low, it will be inefficient to keep these tankers on the water. So for our thesis, low rates next year would actually be a great thing as old tankers will be taken off the water, leaving even less tankers overall. So when demand does come back, the supply of tankers is also gonna be very low, plus demand will be back to normal. That will mean really great rates for an extended period of time. So I think the entire market is gonna perform very well when demand starts getting close to normal again. Oh, and by the way, if you could hit that like button for me so I know if people find this update actually helpful, that would be great feedback for me. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future updates. Okay, now let's go and talk about the particular companies and we'll start with Eurona. Okay, earnings per share came in at 22 cents. It was estimated to be 24 cents. Revenue was $241 million. The dividend was 9 cents and they did an $18.5 million in share buybacks. After listening to the CEO and the CFO speak, I think Euronav is still well positioned to take advantage of the investment thesis in the oil tankers. Now, I do think their policy to return 80% to shareholders is a little too high. I would prefer to see 50% like DHT and pay off a bit more of their debt. But everything is going totally okay here for Euronav. At this time last year, they had made about $570 million in revenue. And this year, they have already booked over $1 billion in revenue, thanks to a stronger than expected Q3 result. So. Good news here from Euronav. 
Okay, the earnings per share for DHT came in at 33 cents and the estimate was 27 cents. The revenue was 117 million. It was estimated to be 109 million. They paid a 20 cent dividend and they prepaid $92 million in debt. This is a really solid report here from DHT. They are managing the business really well. And I think they are probably the best managed tanker company out there. The reason I think they are the best managed is because they get high charter rates and are not afraid to lock in contracts for long periods of time. And because I also like how they keep paying off their debt. Look, dividends I generally actually hate, but for cyclical businesses, they are a nice bonus. Look, I'm gonna make an entire video soon on why I generally hate dividends, but I am okay in this situation with DHT paying a dividend because I'll use that money to reinvest at a high rate somewhere else. This is a nice simple picture summing up DHT's good management. When times are good, they are aggressively paying down debt, prepaying future debt, and returning money to shareholders. When the cycle changes, because they have all this cash and this borrowing capacity saved up, well, they can go out and take advantage of other companies' mismanagement in these bad times. Okay, now moving on to TNK, and their earnings per share came in at nine cents, and it was estimated to be 12 cents. Revenue was 112 million, a bit above the estimate of 110 million, and they paid down $47 million in debt. Now, I think the issue coming out of this conference call was that the management team really didn't have any clear direction on what they are going to do next year. They said they will wait to make any decision on 2021 and beyond at a board meeting in December. Now, personally, I don't really see this as a big problem here. I know the stock sold off on that day dramatically, but things have been changing pretty quickly this year. A wait and see approach seems totally understandable. I like that they just wanted to pay down debt. I think that is responsible and all that I really needed to see. That actually is one of the best things I think a company can do anyway when they don't have big expansion plans. As a shareholder, I am actually really happy with this move. Now for Diamond Air Shipping, the earnings per share came in at minus 24 cents and the estimate was supposed to be minus 19 cents. So the CEO did tell us Q3 wasn't going to be a good quarter back in the Q2 report. And he was of course right. They made a loss this quarter where everyone else was making a profit. Diamond S have far more exposure to the spot rates than the other companies who try to book long-term fixed rates more frequently. Look, this is bad news compared to the other better managed companies. Their financial position is still solid and I don't see any reason they won't be totally fine. At the current share price of $6.30, they have a price to tangible book value of about 0.2. That's crazy low. So they are on the cheaper end of the market, therefore I'm still holding them for at least a return to their fair price. Okay, so the stock prices of all of these companies have tested nearly every one of us this quarter. But if you're like me, you actually loved it. See, I bought some TNK shares at $10.50 and I have actually an order to buy a big parcel of DHT if it ever gets to $4 as well. So I have actually nothing to fear. The companies, if they get into trouble, can sell some of their assets, but they all don't need to because they have good balance sheets. Yes, of course, maybe the world takes longer to recover than expected, but I don't think that is a problem. I think we will get there eventually. Plus, considering the aging fleet, Supply of tankers is going to come off the market without new orders being placed. So there is no sign of any company aggressively ordering new ships. So the thesis is really strong still. Now I know the oil tanker stock prices are a wild ride, but whenever the world oil consumption starts to get close to that 100 million barrel a day number, well, that will be too late to invest in these companies. But if you cannot handle seeing your investment temporarily falling, say 30% or 50%, well, this is definitely not for you. Honestly, nothing really has changed. The thesis is still there and the market is doing pretty much what was expected. And as a risk proposition goes, I think with all of these companies, they have serious discounts to fair value. I don't see much downside and I see strong upside potential. I hear Peter Lynch and Warren Buffett's words ringing in my ears. Be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Look, thanks for staying to the end of the video. Let me know what you think of the oil tankers. I'm interested to hear your opinions. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any of my future updates and I will see you next time.